Hi all, I'm making a WebAssembly multimedia application platform for running apps either in browser or outside in a native player that's much lighter weight than web browsers. I call it Taka, and I've made some demos before showing triangles and shapes and text, or even a 3D fly-through asteroid game. And I can write these in a variety of languages because a variety of languages compile the WebAssembly. I've now added texture drawing support and made a new demo for a platformer game using the programming language Nalua. And for fun, I've used the Godot game engine as an editor, but not as the actual runtime engine for playing the game. Again, Godot is editor only here. Why would I do that? Well, there's different reasons, and different editors also exist, but Godot has editor capabilities built in, such as for tile maps or for defining your sprites. But Godot web exports are not very small. Here's 43 megabytes uncompressed. Maybe compressed it gets to 20 megabytes or less. But the Taka version of the app is less than a megabyte total or less than half a megabyte compressed. Or most of this is just constant Taka runtime support. And the only thing specific to the actual application itself is just this less than 60K that includes all the graphics and game control and everything. And it approximately works even if the controller is still a bit janky. But it definitely proves out the support in Taka for instanced batched texture drawing where a texture means image here. That also includes things like ping and JPEG decoding of images, where all the images are bundled into the 60K here. So let's take a look at how I use the Godot project files inside of my Nelua program. And Nelua is a language that's not exactly Lua, but it does include compile time metaprogramming in a full Lua interpreter. So you can do approximately whatever you want to at compile time, and I'm taking advantage of that in my code. Here's an example of a Godot scene or resource file. And it's not TOML, it's not JSON, it's not YAML, it's its own format. And I wrote a semi-inadequate parser of these Godot resource files that represents them internally as Lua tables, which I printed out here so I could see what was going on. Then I also have a Lua script where I can write macros for Nalua. And I'm generating AST or abstract syntax tree nodes that are gonna directly affect the source that the Nalua compiler is compiling from Nalua into C. And then that C is compiled to WebAssembly for me to load it up in Taka. So here at compile time, I'm running Lua code that loads these resources and then inserts them into Nalua records. Or in the case of the tile map data, I'm just doing base64 decoding of the binary data for later interpretation at runtime because this tile map data is just base64 encoded binary, unlike most of the data here. So again, at compile time, I'm decoding the base64 and storing it as a byte array so that I can interpret it. And I didn't find any documentation on that base64 data for Godot, but I did find the source file that's decoding it. And it says after the first two bytes that it expects to be value zero, it has a list of 12 byte records or structs made of six two byte values. It says where it wants to draw a tile and where that tile comes from. In other words, where it wants to draw the tile and where that tile comes from. And this ping image here, I've just included wholesale into the Taka app binary. That's being done right here. And then in a different Nilua file, I've defined that same record or struct so I can get those destination and source coordinates. Then I build up an array that I can use for drawing or for checking for collisions. And the overall quality of my demo code is probably game jam level. I'm just hacking things out as quick as I can based on my limited time. But I have things here like space for my shader uniforms, player information, that tile map, where the gems are, although I only have one right now and so on. And here's the main entry point for my Taka app. All Taka apps have a start that sets things up and then an update that runs at every frame. And this works fine for both native and web execution. By the way, worth pointing out that Nelua has different options for memory management and allocation, including garbage collection. Although in the case of Wasm, it's good to handle it manually for the callbacks that come in that control the execution. For fun, I've used garbage collection here, although I'm not doing a whole lot of generating garbage in my processing. And I'm playing a little bit fast and loose by running garbage collection steps in the same functions where I'm also doing other kinds of work. Eduardo Bart, the creator of Nilua, has suggested that I don't be so sloppy here, 
but we've gotten by for now at the moment. Anyway, back to the code. We see here at startup time that I'm doing a lot of things like accessing those resources. Here's the gym, here's some of the middle background layer and so on, player information, got the tile map that I'm decoding and so on and so forth. But images are sort of interesting. I can do an image decode and I'm representing that immediately as if it were a GPU texture. However, image decoding in a web browser is asynchronous because it might possibly be slow. So I have to watch for those events getting finished and then get back to the user. And so because of that, in the Rust native player, which is almost completely independent implementation of Taka, I also have a background worker and get back to the user when it's ready. In a Taka app, that means I have this reference to this texture, but I shouldn't actually use it yet. Instead, I watch for this tasks done event. And when it's done, I come over here and finish the init. And then I figure after that's done, I can make use of other events to play the game. That's the full image loading that I need to do from a Taka app. And meanwhile, one other fun thing I had to deal with was that the output from the Wasm C compiler for Nilua ended up using a bit of WASI or WebAssembly system interface that I wasn't getting out of the C3 and ZIG outputs before. So I had to stub out some of these functions and I filled in a little bit more from things I did previously for the FD write function, which is how you can print to standard out or standard error. So I implemented that in a more serious way in the Rust and also in the TypeScript, which again, remember these are mostly independent implementations of Taka, in order to support plain old print statements. As a side effect, it also means that my simple binaries from my Rio programming language also work in Taka now. So here I'm running Taka the native player in this case, but accessing a WASM file compiled from my Hello World Rio source file. It's sort of boring because there's no actual Taka display, but the print statements here actually do go to standard out. I would need support for things like importing functions and making arrays and stuff in Rio, which I don't have yet, in order to actually make Taka apps in Rio. But it's still fun that Taka is now running my Rio programs. Anyway, let's look a little bit at how the tiled texture rendering gets done for the batch drawing for the demo game that I made. I have a relatively simple shader that I chose to write in WGSL. I compiled a Spear V so I can use different source shader languages as well. I end up drawing rectangles to put the tiles into, and this is going to be fixed for every tile. But separately, each tile needs to know its position and size on the screen, as well as its position and size in that source atlas ping image that we saw previously, for example, here in Godot. And these things are instanced. Well, this is constant for each instance. And then I just do some offsets and scaling in the vertex shader. And in the fragment shader, I just sample the image. Now this is gonna get interesting and I have not handled it fully yet. In WGSL or Spear V, I sample from some texture using some sampler. But in the web browser where I'm rendering with WebGL2, I end up compiling to GLSL. And there's just a sampler 2D uniform. And it just gets textured out of. And it's the settings that I put in the WebGL code that control how it gets sampled. And by sampling, I mean things like, am I picking out sharp pixels? Am I interpolating a smooth image? Things like that. And I'm not quite sure how to handle this properly for the two sides yet. So I might need to dig into that later. For now, I just have a fixed sampler that just does crisp pixelated sampling. And then meanwhile, at each frame, I draw all these things. All these end up being commands sent out to either WebGL2 in the browser or to WGPU in batched form for the native player, where I end up building those instances for the buffers that go into these spots here. And then here are the actual Taka bindings and draw commands. I'm considering making this explicitly batched. Might be more efficient, or maybe I'll have to figure out how to batch things more just in the WebGL version, because there's a little bit of difference in behavior and I have to be careful how I'm writing right now. And I wanna make it so that it's hard to write things that will behave differently in web versus native players. So that's a quick explanation of how textured drawing works today.
well, let's prove that the Godot editor is actually what's being used in my Taka app. Let's grab some tile here that might be fun and add some new things to the screen. So we'll save here in Godot. And again, if we remember, this is being loaded up at compile time using Lua code and put into my Nalua program. So I need to rebuild my Nalua to pick up those changes. And there we go, 57K or so of output. And let's run that in the native player. Here we go. And we see here that those new tiles are now in place. Yay. And we have our Taka app being run in a native player or in the web player. Again, unchanged binary for either. And I'm using Godot as my editor for my game. Some next steps I need are render to texture and sound playing and simple saving of data. So hopefully the next demo can incorporate some of that. Meanwhile, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe and make sure to find the demo link in the video description. Bye y'all.